The purpose of these videos is to standardize the performance of transthoracic echocardiographic studies and to help the learner in optimizing and troubleshooting image acquisition. This second short video will review and explain the terminology of basic controls that you will find on an ultrasound system, their functionality for image optimization, also known as nebology, how to handle and move the ultrasound transducer effectively. In this video, we will not explain how to obtain, optimize a thoracic, transthoracic views, nor how to perform specific measurements. Although each ultrasound system is different, you should become familiar with the one you will be using in your clinical practice. The basic controls are the same. You should always adjust the depth according to the structures you want to examine, with the goal of obtaining their complete visualization. Always set the depth to extend approximately one to two centimeters beyond the cardiac structure you are interested in to ensure that they are not cut off. At the same time, if not strictly necessary, do not set too much depth. Excessive depth will affect your temporal resolution and the quality of the images. The ultrasound signals that return to the transducer are converted into electrical signals. These signals are usually too loud to be displayed on the ultrasound monitor and need to be amplified. This amplification process is also called receiver gain and can be adjusted by the sonographer to alter the brightness of the image. When you change the gain, each signal undergoes an equal amount of amplification and therefore the entire image is made brighter or darker. That means that changing the gain does not improve the signal to noise ratio, since both signal and noise are amplified equally. These two images demonstrate how changes in gain alter brightness of the entire image. The image on the left is obtained with high amplification or gain, while the image on the right was obtained by reducing the amplification. Another function that can be adjusted to improve the quality of the images is called compensation. Ultrasound waves are attenuated as they travel through the tissues. Therefore, identical structures located at different depths would appear of different brightness due to the attenuation process. Deeper structures will appear darker than the superficial ones. With compensation, also called time gain compensation or depth gain compensation, you can create an image that is uniformly bright from top to bottom by adjusting the amplification or gain selectively at different depths. The focus is also an important setting to know as it will improve the resolution at a selective depth. Focusing allows you to concentrate the ultrasounds into a narrower beam and thus improve lateral resolution. You can therefore adjust the focal depth to improve the resolution at a specific depth. As you remember, the frequency of the ultrasound transducer affects image resolution and tissue penetration. High frequencies allow higher resolution but low tissue penetration, while low frequencies allow higher tissue penetration but lower resolution. Adult transthoracic echocardiography usually employs low frequency transducers, 2 to 4 MHz. In obese patients, for example, it may be useful to decrease their frequency to obtain better image quality. Each probe has a range of frequencies that will allow better resolution or penetration. This is usually depicted on the screen with the triangle P, G, and R, standing respectively for penetration, general, and resolution. Most of the times, the default setting is general. Finally, most of the machines also have a button that would allow you to go back to the default setting. Determining the probe orientation is crucial for correct image interpretation. As you notice, transducers have an indicator or marker, usually an indentation or a light, on one side. This marker helps orientation in two key aspects of image acquisition. Number one, how the marker is oriented relative to the screen and number two, how it is positioned relative to the patient. Several different conventions and rules exist on how the marker is oriented relative to the screen, depending on type of exam, for instance, cardiac, abdominal, or vascular, 
or specialty, such as general radiology, emergency medicine, cardiology. For adult transthoracic echocardiography performed by cardiologists and intensivists, two main rules are applied. The top of the screen is closest to the probe, with deeper structures displayed at the bottom of the screen. The probe marker corresponds to the right side of the screen, as indicated by a marker on, top, on the top right of the ultrasound sector. It is paramount that you verify your orientation prior to beginning any exam. For example, emergency physicians often use a different and opposite convention, with the screen marker on the left top corner of the ultrasound sector. Another essential component of the ultrasound examination is the correct transducer manipulation. According to the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine, we can identify five primary movements of the transducer. Sliding, rotating, tilting, and rocking, compression. To correctly describe and understand these movements, we will refer to the following key components of an ultrasound transducer. Marker, main axis, footprint, or shape of the transducer, and tail or posterior part of the transducer. The first movement is the sliding, which refers to the overall movement of the probe towards a specific direction or area of the body. The transducer can also be rotated around the axis of the transducer footprint in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. The relative position of the probe indicator provides spatial orientation for this type of movement. For example, when the marker is directed cephalad, it is considered facing 12 o'clock. A 90 degree clockwise rotation of the transducer will determine a turn of the marker from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Rocking is the movement of the probe along its main axis changing only the angle of the insinuation of the transducer in this axis while maintaining a fixed point on the body. Rocking the transducer toward or away from the marker will allow you to center the area of interest or to extend the field of view. This movement is also called in-plane motion. In contrast, tilting refers to a movement of the probe in a plane perpendicular to its main axis along a fixed point on the body while changing the angle of insinuation. Tilting is therefore a motion that is perpendicular to rocking. Tilting the transducer allows to visualize different planes in the same axis without sliding the transducer on the body. For example, the tilting motion allows, without sliding of the transducer, visualization from the base to the apex of the heart in the parasternal short axis view or of the IVC and aorta in the subcostal longitudinal view. Compression is defined as pressure applied on the transducer, with the transducer footprint kept at a fixed position. It can be used to make adequate contact between the transducer footprint and the patient's body, thus improving image quality. Always remember to minimize as much as possible the compression to maintain the patient's comfort. For example, in this parasternal lung axis view, you can observe that the marker is directed toward the patient's right shoulder. A tilting movement allows visualization of different planes in the same long axis of the heart without sliding the transducer. Rocking changes the field of view of the same plane or centers the area of interest, for example, aortic or mitral valve, without sliding the transducer. Finally, clockwise 90 degree rotation will change the view from long axis to short axis. Especially at the beginning of your training, we recommend you to do only one manipulation at a time to better understand which movement modified your view. Remember that a very small movement of the transducer will lead to a significant change in a deeper scanning plane. Also, we recommend you to have your wrist and forearm placed on the patient's skin to avoid involuntary sliding and to hold the probe with your fingers as if you're using a pen. You should not apply a lot of pressure on the probe itself with your fingers and one should be able to remove the probe from your hand with little force. Remember to optimize the contact of the transducer to the patient's body by applying some pressure, but at the same time, minimize as much as possible the compression to maintain the patient's comfort.
This concludes our nymbology image optimization and transducer manipulation video. We will now review each view in a series of separate videos. It took every ounce of strength not to say to maintain Teddy's comfort. <laughs> we spent too much time. Teddy! Teddy!